We've seen quite a few questions and comments about using hyperbaric oxygen therapy for anemia. Is hyperbaric oxygen safe and effective for somebody with anemia? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Anemia is a very broad term, which really just describes a variety of different conditions that somebody may have. But at the end of the day, the issue is oxygen delivery into the cell. In some cases, that's because there's blood loss. In other cases, there's a red blood cell disorder. In other cases, they may be deficient in certain vitamins and minerals like iron or B12. So there are many causes of anemia and many types of anemia, but the question is, is hyperbaric an appropriate, safe, and effective device to use for somebody suffering with anemia? And the answer, for the most part, is yes. This is another case where we use hyperbaric even in traditional medicine. Traditional hyperbarics, severe anemia is considered an FDA-approved indication for hyperbaric oxygen. Now, typically that is reserved for very severe cases, near life and death, and it's associated with blood loss anemia, meaning that this person has lost enough blood that there's just not enough red blood cells carrying oxygen to deliver oxygen to the cell. In very severe cases, this is literally life or death. And in traditional hyperbarics, we reserve hyperbaric therapy for only these cases. Now, why does hyperbaric work? There was a study done back in 1948 called Life Without Blood. And in this study, what they did was they took half a dozen pigs and they literally drained all of the blood out of their system. Now, they needed to have some sort of fluid, so they replaced the blood volume, the liquid volume, with a saline solution so that the cardiovascular system could still pump a fluid throughout that pig's body. Now, this experiment was done at three atmospheres of pressure, so three times the pressure of sea level, at 100% oxygen. And what they found in this study was that the pigs not only survived, they were thriving at three atmospheres on 100% oxygen. That was enough oxygen with zero red blood cells to sustain life. And so life could be sustained with zero red blood cells at a high enough pressure and a high enough percentage of oxygen. Now, I'm not suggesting that we put people at three atmospheres on 100% oxygen for anemia, but it's just to illustrate the point that if the issue with anemia is some type of dysfunction leading to the inability to deliver oxygen to our cells through the normal physiologic delivery system, then supersaturating the plasma with oxygen is literally the solution. And in hyperbaric oxygen, that's what we're doing. We're bypassing red blood cell carrying capacity altogether. We're dissolving additional oxygen into the fluids of the body. And as a result, we can deliver oxygen to those cells sufficiently through creating this oxygen surplus in the plasma of the blood. Now, again, in all of traditional hyperbarics, we reserve hyperbarics only for these very severe life or death or life and limb type conditions. But we can still apply that same thought process to less severe more chronic issues. There are a variety of different types of anemia. Again, someone could have some low-grade internal bleeding. Maybe they have Crohn's and colitis and they're losing blood through their stool. Maybe they're iron deficient or B12 deficient. Perhaps they have some other red blood cell disorder that's inhibiting the red blood cell from either being saturated at the lung level or inhibiting the red blood cells from delivering oxygen to the cells. Perhaps there's a gradient issue that's reducing the ability of oxygen to just flow down its concentration gradient into the cell and into the mitochondria. Virtually in all of these cases, going into a hyperbaric chamber and saturating the plasma and increasing the oxygen gradient is going to be at least a temporary solution for whatever those issues happen to be, making sure that we can deliver oxygen to the cell and to the mitochondria Hopefully, while we're then doing more detective work to figure out, well, why was this happening in the first place? We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. Hyperbarics used in that traditional model for severe anemia is typically two and a half atmospheres for 90 minutes or more, and there might be five or six treatments just to help somebody get through a very critical phase in their recovery. 
On the chronic side, our job again, in my opinion, is to deliver an amount of hyperbaric that is required relative to the patient's need. In more mild cases of anemia, we can use more mild intensities of hyperbaric. In more severe cases of anemia, we can use more intense protocols in hyperbaric to meet that patient's need. I can't tell you how often I have somebody in the office, we do blood work, they're mildly anemic, and the patient says, well, oh, that's just normal for me. I've always been that way. Well, just because it's always been that way for that person, or just because mild levels of anemia are very common today, doesn't make that normal and certainly interferes with that person's ability to heal and regulate their body. We need sufficient amounts of oxygen in order to make sure that we're getting proper and optimal biologic and physiological function. And so again, detective work is probably necessary to figure out, well, why has this person been chronically anemic? But in the meantime, the addition of hyperbaric therapy in their case is literally the temporary solution to help make sure they're getting the oxygen that they need while we figure out what else this person's going to require in order to fully heal. And so again, to finish this with a protocol, what should that range of protocols be? If our goal is to match intensity of therapy with severity of their condition, more mild cases of anemia are gonna get less aggressive protocols of hyperbaric. More severe cases of anemia are gonna get more aggressive protocols of hyperbaric. This may range anywhere from 1.3 on the mild end to 1.75 or even 2.0 on the more severe end as far as pressures of oxygen go. And then 60 minutes, maybe one to three times a week on the mild cases, three to five times a week on the more moderate cases, and potentially every day on more severe cases of anemia, just to make sure that this person is getting sufficient levels of oxygen regularly in order to perform optimal biological functions. This protocol and protocols like this and videos that I've done come from a textbook that Dr. Joe DeTore and I just finished publishing, The Art and Science of Hyperbaric Medicine, which is now available. And in that book, we literally cover everything you ever wanted to know about hyperbaric oxygen, but specifically, we cover mechanisms of action as well as protocols that you might wanna utilize if we're trying to stimulate a certain mechanism, along with on-label and off-label conditions, the rationale, the mechanisms of action, and then the potential protocol for what those should look like. And we cover almost 50 of the most common off-label conditions that people are using hyperbaric oxygen for. If you're interested in getting a copy of that book, click on the link in the description below and grab your copy today. Thanks again for your attention and we'll see you on the next video.